Hey guys, it's day 15. Day 15, halfway through. Halfway through. Yeah. It's uh, all down here from now. <laughs> Still in the dreaming about things you're craving. I haven't really been doing that anymore. Actually. I mean, so that's good. How about you? I think I did last night, but I don't remember it. Oh. Like I woke up and I was like... <laughs> That's cool. How you been feeling today? Uh, pretty good. I had a very strange. Bless you. I had a very strange day at work. But other than that, felt pretty good. Good. I have felt good. Whatever I, I wasn't feeling good about yesterday seems to have sorted itself out. You know, enjoying our evening walk. Well, afternoon walk. It's only 4 30. I've really been enjoying the weather in this last week. Yeah. Compared to earlier, it's nice fall weather. It's got some coolness to the air. <laughs> Let's make the dog more frisky. <laughs> mm -hmm. Gonna have some tasty tonight. Oh, yeah. And I'm making a big batch of bone broth today. Now here's the interesting thing. I, I I did not have any bones to make bone broth with. Or so I thought I had two. I have two little bones. Two leftover pieces of oxtail. From the last time we had that. That's the only bones in the house to make bone broth with. But I found in the fridge the secret weapon of bone broth that we learned from Nom Nom Paleo. You mean freezer? The freezer, yeah. That's it. Yeah, if I found it in the fridge, I'd have gone straight in the bag. Huh. But it was a package of chicken's feet. Yes. Now, I don't know how popular that is in other regions of the country. But, you know, around here, <laughs> we have the Piggly Wiggly. And they have the chicken feet in the, in the chicken section of the, of the meat case. And this is an excellent source of bone broth materials because you know it's, it's feet which means it's nothing but bone and connective tissue and collagen and gelatin and marrow and all those good tasty things that make really great bone broth so if you can you know add a couple chicken feet in with your bone broth just be careful because chickens are not necessarily the world's cleanest animals that you cut the claws off of the chicken feet. I realize I've lost a lot of people there. It's like, oh, chicken feet? And then I have to like cut the toes off? <laughs> yeah, you kind of do. But it's the re reward for it is worth it. When you when you make your first batch of bone broth that you have in a like gallon pitcher in the fridge, you take it out the next day and it won't pour because it's completely gelatinized. That's when you know you have this stuff. That is pure, healthy, good for you stuff. So, I'm excited about that. Yeah, ahead. we have a YouTube channel that we like to watch all the time called James Townsend and Son. And they make food. They're like reenactors. Yeah, they do 18th century cooking. And it's really interesting. And a lot of times when they make gravy, they'll actually, you know, to, to eat with, especially with uh, like meat pies and stuff, what they'll do is they'll take bones from meat, put it in a dish with some water, maybe a little seasoning, and cook that, and that's their gravy. Now, you know what we think of as great of great as what we think of as gravy usually involves you know fat drippings and flour sometimes milk yeah or if you're you know even and technically that's a roux that's right that is technically a roux isn't it yeah because it's the same base you would use if, like if you were making macaroni and cheese you want to make cheese sauce or you could add like sausage or dried beef into it and serve it over biscuits. 
do historical reenactments and stuff like that, especially when they do the cooking, because you're talking about some old school cooking. And if you want to get away from unprocessed food, even though a lot of the stuff they do is not paleo by any part of the Oh no, they, they do a lot of bread. They cook bread with their bread. They make bread <laughs> out of other bread. I've seen them do it. It's true. <laughs> Sourdough. Yeah, but, uh, but still, you know, if you want to start really getting a feel for unprocessed cooking, it's, it's a decent place to start. But one of the things we learn from that is like, you know, settlers and people who lived in pre-industrial times ate like 4,000 calories a day because they were, they were the work, you know, there was no labor <laughs> saving. Yeah, and uh, I've always wondered how people in, in the old days, they talk about how much they'd work, they'd work from sun up to sundown, backbreaking labor in the fields and stuff like that. It's like, how could you stand that and why would you well you know why you don't have a choice but how could you stand that and then you know eating more especially eating paleo but eating more just completely unprocessed everything it makes more and more sense because you have more energy your body isn't fighting against itself in terms of like inflammation and fighting the processing stuff and oh you remember that one thing you wrote on your blog about preservatives mm -hmm. yeah tell you that you love it yeah, preservatives. You know, we the food manufacturers wanted their food to be more shelf stable, so they started experimenting and found preservatives to make them more shelf stable. Now we're not talking about the old way of preserving things, which was with a lot of salt. <laughs> but salt is bad, so you got to preserve it. So they started adding chemicals to it. Well, yes, the chemicals serve to preserve the food from being broken down by bacteria. But you also have to think that part of what uh, breaks down food in your gut is bacteria. <laughs> If it's hard for bacteria to break it down, then it's hard for you to digest it completely. It's hard for you to break it down into the elemental components that you need. So it's hard to break it down into the minerals and the vitamins that you need. And so your brain isn't getting the signal that your body has what it needs. So, you keep eating. Exactly. Yes. And if you keep eating the same processed stuff, then you're still going to have a lot of trouble breaking it down because it's not meant to be broken down. Yeah, if you've been uh, following along and doing the, uh, the Whole30 challenge this month, or if you've done a Whole30 before, you probably noticed the first few meals that you ate uh, with the... Uh, with the paleo food, you got full really fast. You know, it can be surprising, especially I remember, uh, and I'd look down at the portions, and my, my eyes would always be big on the summit, so I'm used to eating really big portions. And so I'd look down and, and be like, you know, this, is, this isn't enough, and then I'd eat, and it's, I'd be so full afterwards. And that's because, you know, it's actually got the nutrients you need in a form that you can easily digest so your brain gets that signal that you need to stop eating now. Boom. And that solves that problem, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've read a lot of different books and everything and they're like, well, you know, eat slower so that your body, you know, knows because it takes a while for it to, you know, signal satiety. And that is true, but that feeling that you get an hour or two later where you're like I'm so hungry yeah. isn't normal that's yeah. not natural yeah, you've got all the calories you need for the day already but you your nutrients starved yeah so that's why so many uh, morbidly obese people are actually starving to death yeah they are literally malnourished uh, even while they're um, you know, morbidly obese. Uh, Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, when they wrote the book Good Omens, if you haven't read that, it's an outstanding book, hashtag not sponsored. 
Um, but the, some of the characters in it were modern day re envisionings of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And Famine was a dietitian who do all these fad diets and put on the entire fad diet craze you saw on the 70s and 80s was actually famine spreading across the world. And uh, he's the one who developed the fast food diet or the fast food meals that are so nutritionally void but full of empty calories. People were, you know, ballooning up like, like the Michelin man while starving to death. And uh, so it's really, you know, fun in the book. To see that it's a nice modern take the scary part is how true that actually is is we have food that is nutrient light and calorie dense whereas when you eat, you eat paleo it's almost the opposite of that right especially if you start adding awful to your diet because you know organ meat is very nutrient dense uh, especially liver it's got a whole lot of vitamin a and a whole lot of other vitamins. Yeah, it's basically how people who live in the extreme Arctic uh, areas can get away with going months and months and months without eating any vegetables, is the vitamins that they need that you normally get from vegetables, you can get from the organ meats. So don't snare that stuff, it's super, super healthy for you. Yeah, including things that you might be like, oh, why would I eat that? Like, uh, you can't really get calcium in most organ meats just not a lot of calcium but if you need calcium you can eat cow tongue because tongue has a lot of calcium and it is a tougher uh, meat so you know you just cook it longer at a lower temperature and it's actually rather delicious it is if you have a pressure cooker I, I highly recommend just putting it in there uh, on a very large you know, long setting and that will that will take care of the toughness problem. Or slow cooker. Or slow cooker, you know, depending on how fresh the time you are. And a lot of times it's uh, a lot cheaper than other cuts of beef because it is something that people are going to be like, well, I'm not touching that. And if you're a little squeamish, then just you know. Put it in the pot, and as soon as you open the lid, take a couple of forks and just start pulling it apart. Yeah. <laughs> Make it unregular. After that, you know, it's any other cut of beef. Now, for me, one of the deal breakers when we were talking about awful is, is liver. I am not a fan of liver. But we found some really great ways to incorporate it into other things and make it delicious. Yes, like our super sausage. Our super sausage. Our blueberry super sausage. And we've made that with pork sauce, with ground pork and ground turkey. I prefer it with the ground turkey because uh, the uh, the liver is very strongly flavored. So the milder meat actually helps uh, bring that flavor down so that it blends in better. It plays well with the other flavors like the, the herbs and the spices and the blueberry. But you know, when you, when you get that mix right, you know, that's a really good sausage. Yeah, you definitely need some good spices for that. Mm -hmm. Can you think of anything else? Uh, no. No, I didn't know I was going to talk this much. Maybe not. <laughs> uh. <laughs> hey. Hey. Well, this has been day 15. Hope you enjoyed it. We certainly did. Um, don't, don't forget, don't forget to, to like, subscribe. And Leave comments down comments below. Comments down below. Visit my Patreon. Absolutely. And we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, um, did you talk? Do you ever mention your cookbook? Uh, no, I don't yeah. think I have. You know, she has a whole cookbook. We talk about all these paleo recipes we do. An entire cookbook. Right now, it's on Amazon Unlimited. If you're part of the Amazon um, Kindle Unlimited program, you can get it for free. If not, it's still you know great Kindle book. It's the uh, it's paleo. thirty paleo recipes that we have come up with mostly me yeah <laughs> but we've tested all of them and they are absolutely delicious uh i did an a to z challenge um 2015 on my blog and it's 
those recipes but some of them have been improved some of them have better pictures and then I've got four new recipes in there two of which I've talked about before like the mayonnaise and the bone broth mm. and then two of which I have never published anywhere before so they're exclusive in the book you have to get the book to get them and they are a breakfast sandwich oh that's such a good breakfast sandwich yeah we have it quite often not during Whole30 because you can't yeah because it has paleo pancakes for the buns and a uh, party type food barbecue party type food yeah oh that's so good I can't wait to have that again too well yeah all these recipes are tasty and tested and guaranteed paleo or primal whichever one it is it's listed mm -hmm. with the recipes so and uh, nutritional facts are listed and it's just a neat little book and you can get it like you said on Kindle Unlimited if you have Kindle Unlimited or you can pay $5.99 and get it worth every penny for a good paleo book Come on, you. And it's got really fun and delicious recipes. Some are a little more involved. Some of them are international. Some of them are really simple. You get a lot of good variety. And I, I know a lot of people, when they, they go through that first uh, shock of paleo, it's like all the things that you can't eat. Well, it gives you all the options that you can. It's really great. All right. So, yes, that. Yes, that. And uh, yeah, just go to Amazon and under Kindle, just, you can type in A to Z Challenge Paleo and it'll come up. I think it's like the third one. Of course, I always type in A to Z Paleo and it comes up as the third one. If you put in Challenge, it might come up as the first one. I don't know. <laughs> You'll find it, we're sure. We, we have faith in you. But Deborah McVeigh, me. Yes. And I'm so proud. She did all the photographs too. It's really good stuff. Yeah, I did all the photographs and we published it together. And it's awesome. <laughs> Yay. Alright, so that's it for today. And we'll see you tomorrow. Alright, bye bye. bye, -bye.